Hi guys, Larry Feldman with a lesson on flowcharting. In this lesson, we're going to flowchart the pseudocode that we created to implement the quadratic formula. Once you have the pseudocode, creating a flowchart is usually pretty straightforward. Now, I just want to mention that I'm using PowerPoint version 2008 on a Mac. If you're using a different version of PowerPoint on a PC, your screen will probably look different. Just shoot me an email and I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out. The first thing we want to do after opening PowerPoint is change the layout from landscape to portrait. So here I'm going to hit page setup and I'm choosing the slide layout to be portrait. That gives us more vertical room to, uh, to utilize. And then uh, quickly looking at our pseudocode, the first thing we need to do is implement the start command and you'll see that almost all the symbols that we're going to use are under this uh, shapes menu and ironically enough they're under this flowchart submenu so we're going to pick a connector like this and we're gonna put it in there double click to remove the fill then I'm going to double click outside of the uh, the oval and type actually I'm going to change the size of the text first to 14 and write start then we can drag this text by grabbing an edge inside the oval and I'm fine-tuning the placement using the arrows on my keyboard so that's where we begin then going back to the uh, pseudocode we need to input A, B, and C. To input data we need to use a parallelogram. So let's go to flowchart, parallelogram, and we're gonna drop that in here, get rid of the fill, and I'm just going to duplicate the text so that um, the text from the start uh, label so that I can preserve the uh, the formatting and keep it consistent. And I'm just going to write input A, B, C. I drag this into place, position it with the arrows, and then I need to connect the start icon and the parallelogram with an arrow. So I go to lines and connectors, I need a one-sided or one-headed arrow, and I connect the two shapes like that. Um, I highlighted the entire parallelogram along with the text so that I could select everything. And now I'm using the arrows just to line things up nicely because I'm a perfectionist. So um, now we have start input A, B, C. Uh, going back to the uh, pseudocode, we need to test to see if A equals zero. So now we introduce a new shape, which is a diamond and that's called decision in PowerPoint so we put that in here get rid of the shading or the fill color let's steal this text by command D that's uh, duplicate and I'm just gonna write in here does a equal zero question mark bring that into place line things up a little bit and then connect them with an arrow like this and that's looking pretty good now let's go back to the uh, pseudocode if a equals zero we output an error message and we end so we're going to use a parallelogram again. Let's duplicate that because input and output both use a parallelogram. Let's duplicate the text just to preserve the formatting. And I'm going to say, and I'm going to say output. Uh, I'm going to hit the return key. A cannot be zero. Let's select this text. 
and format it to be centered, like here, align center, and drag that into place. Drop this all down a little bit and connect with an arrow. And then we have to do, we have to terminate this branch by duplicating the oval and typing end. So I'm, as I said, I'm just going to steal this text by duplicating it and dragging it into place. Type end and insert it into that oval. Then I need to take an arrow and connect this parallelogram, the output, to the end icon like this. Now one of the most important pieces that I need to do at this stage is label this branch right here. What What is this label? This answers the question that's being posed by the decision diamond. Does A equal zero? If the answer is yes, I'm going to, we're going to head to the right, output A cannot be zero and end. If the answer is no, we're going to come down the bottom and we're going to continue. So let's go back to the uh, pseudocode. If the answer is no, we need to compute the discriminant. So I'm going to copy that uh, and here we introduce a new flowchart shape called a process and a process is just a place where we do computations. Let's get rid of the fill. I'm going to double click outside the shape and control V for paste. I need to change the size of this to be consistent. So I'm changing it to 14, which is what I've been using. Put that inside the process. And then connect the decision above to the calculation of the discriminant. And then I'm going to line things up like that. Now, we've computed the discriminant. We have another, another decision to make. Let's duplicate that, that diamond. We come down here. Let's duplicate this text. And let's, let's refer to the pseudocode again. If the discriminant is greater than or equal to 0, we have quite a few things to do. We have to fall into this block. So let's ask that question. Is the discriminant greater than or equal to 0? Let's put that inside the diamond. And let's connect the discriminant computation to the decision. And then we have to figure out um, the remaining portions of the flowchart based upon the answer to this question, Does the discrim is the discriminant greater than or equal to zero? Now, I'm going to pause the uh, video and I'm going to finish the flowchart just to uh, save time. Okay, so magically the rest of the flowchart appeared. I just saved you about uh, 10 minutes of anguish. Um, so let's just, let's just review what we have. We start, we input A, B, C. We decide if A is 0. If, if it is, we output A cannot be 0, and we end. If A uh, is not 0, and actually I need to uh, put a label here. So let's put no. Drag this into place. A is not 0. We calculate the discriminant. We, um, we test the discriminant, so I need to uh, put these labels in here. 
So if the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero, we calculate the two answers, we output them, and we end. If the discriminant is not greater than or equal to zero, meaning it's less than zero, let's put that right there, we output no real solutions, and then we end. So that's, that's basically it. Um, I hope that was helpful. And uh, let me just shrink this down, see if I can fit it on one screen. Looks like it, I can. That's the final flowchart. As I said, if you have any questions, just email me or write a comment in YouTube. And I will see you next time. Thanks.